Okay then, so currently the response that we get back from Firebase when we try to sign in anonymously, if it was a success, is this big object right here, which is a Firebase user object. And that's what we're printing down here to the console. Now this contains a UID, which can be useful because it identifies the user that's logged in, but it also contains a lot of information that I don't need for this app. So what I'm going to do is when we receive this Firebase user back right here, I want to turn this into some kind of object that's a lot lighter and just contains the information that I actually need. And all the information I need at the minute really is this UID because that identifies the user. But it could also include other information if you want it to, such as an email or maybe a display name or something else in the future. Basically, any property that you might want to keep hold of as a user navigates between different screens on your app, you can put into this user object that we're going to create. So what we need to do now is figure out a way to turn this Firebase user object into a user object that we actually want to use in this app. So the first step is to actually create a user class to base these user models on. So what I'm going to do is go into our lib folder and I'm going to create a new folder over here called models. And we're going to create a user model, so new file, and we'll call this user.dart. So all this is going to be is a simple class called user. And inside this class, we just want to define what properties that user is going to have. Now, the only thing I want to declare at the minute is a final property, something that won't change as a user goes between different screens, which is also a string. And that is going to be the UID. That is the thing I want to use at some point, maybe. So... Now we have this property declared. We also need to set this property in a constructor. So I'm going to say user and then I'm going to say this dot UID. So this is going to use named parameters to set this. When we create a new instance of the user class, we're going to pass in the UID property and it's going to auto apply it to this thing right here. Okay. So now we have that user class set up. The next thing to do is actually turn the Firebase user object we get here into a user object based on this class. So let me save this file and then let me go into the auth file over here. This is the auth service file and this is where we declare a function to sign in anonymously. When we get this Firebase user back right here, then what I want to do is actually turn this into our own custom user based on this user class. So we're taking out all the stuff we don't need and just storing the UID. So to do that, I'm going to create a new function over here. And this function is going to create a user object based on a Firebase user. So let's just write a comment to say what it's going to do. Create user object based on Firebase user. Okay. Now, this is going to return a user object. So the return type is user. Then we need to give this function a name. I'm going to call it user from Firebase user and this is a private function denoted by this underscore meaning we can only use it inside this file here and inside this function we want to accept a firebase user so firebase user user and then inside the function we want to take that user and we want to turn it into a new user based on this class right here so a different kind of user object so what we need to do first of all is return something right we need to return that new user but we first of all want to check that the user is not equal to null. So I'm going to say user is not equal to null. And we're using a ternary operator here. So we're going to evaluate this. And if this is true, if it's not equal to null, then we're going to return a new user instance. And we need to import this, by the way. So I'll type out user and go down here, press tab, and it's going to auto import that for me at the top up here. We want to return a new user and we're going to pass in the UID because we need to remember, we need to pass in the UID right here as a named parameter. So UID is going to be equal to the user we take in from this thing right here, this user, and grab the UID property off that. Because remember, if I open up the terminal, go to debug console, this is the UID property right here. That is what we're trying to get. So I can then say, okay, well, it's on the user object we take in, the Firebase user dot UID, okay? So we're now making a new user object based on this thing right here that we get, this user. Now, that's the case. This is the return if this 
is true if the user is not equal to null that we get back. Okay, so if we actually get a Firebase user back and this is true, then we're gonna return this. If it's not true, then we'll just return null, okay? So now we have this function, the next thing we need to do is actually call this function down here when we get this Firebase user back. So instead of returning user, let's now return user from Firebase user and then pass in the user right here, the Firebase user, okay? So now this should all work. Now we should return a custom user object instead of a Firebase user. So let me just go to refresh and let me open up the terminal and go to the debug console. And when I sign in now, we shouldn't see the Firebase user anymore. We should see our custom user object. So sign in and we can see signed in an instance of user. So that means an instance of our user class. But what I could do is go to the sign in page or the sign in widget over here. And instead of just printing the result, do result.uid and you'll be able to see that we have that UID property on that instance of user. So save it and sign in a non, and we can see now we have that ID. So there we go, we've simplified what user object we're using now in our app, so we don't have all of that extra information we don't need, and we can control exactly what properties our user should have in our own user class. The next thing we need to do now is listen for when a user signs in, so that we can react to that and show the correct content. Okay then, so currently what we're doing inside our app is signing in in the sign in widget. And then Firebase is sending that Firebase user back, we're turning it into our own custom user, and then all we're doing with that user is just printing it to the console at the minute. Now what we really want to do is listen for when we get that user object back, for when there's an auth change, has a user just logged in? And when that's the case, we want to then show the user this side of the widget tree and not this side. So we want to be listening for these auth changes and when a user logs in or logs out, then we show the appropriate side of the widget tree. And to achieve this, we'll be using something called a stream, which we're gonna discuss in the next lesson.